Hey guys, I want to talk to you today about how to properly install a piston and rod assembly. So we've got our piston and rod assembly here, we've got our rings on here, an oil ring and two compression rings. we got our bearing in there, we got uh, lube on there. First of all, before you install a piston into a cylinder, you need to make sure that you stagger the ring end gaps. If you look, these rings have gaps right here and they're lined up. We want to take and we want to leave that one of them here we want to take the other one and we want to stagger it. They need to be opposite each other, otherwise you're going to have blow-by. So once you get the ring staggered, we're going to take WD-40, and I know that sounds crazy, but we'll explain that. We're going to take WD-40, spray a little on the cylinder, spray a little on the rings. We don't want a lot of heavy oil. Uh, Total Seal is one of the biggest manufacturers of performance rings in the country and they recommend WD-40 for putting in rings, not oil, okay? We also have a ring, comp uh, a ring compressor. This is a cone style ring compressor. You need to make sure you have the right one. This is a 30 over bore on this engine. So we have a ring compressor that's 4.030 or 30 over. And then we're just going to very carefully take our piston. We want the notch on the bearings here on the Chevrolet to the outside of the block and the dot always goes to the front of the engine. So we got a ring staggered, we got a lubed up. You got to be very careful when you go in here. These rings will usually start to catch on the edge of this compressor. And so what we have to do is I got to kind of work those rings in there. Once I get that in there, we also have to uh, do something very important called putting a journal protector. This is a journal protector, okay? We're going to go down here and we're going to put this journal protector on. Now I can go ahead and get up top here, Dan. I can go ahead, there's a lot of ways to do this, I can go ahead and run this in and get it flush with the bore before I put my journal protector on because I'm not going to be anywhere near the crank as long as I'm at bottom dead center, which is where you need to be. So if you look at this, you can see my rod's not anywhere near bottom dead center, or anywhere the crank rather. So I just put my journal protector on, and then I take my hammer and I just drive that piston on down in very gently. Once I get it down there, I can go ahead and take my journal protector off. And then, of course, you can put your cap on. You want to lube up the bearings, of course. We're going to put a little bit of the correct kind of lube on our bearing. Now, you never want to touch these bearings with your fingers without lube on there because the oil in your fingers will create a spot that the oil won't stick to. But once you get lube on there, you can spread it around. And of course we need our, <laughs> our connecting rod nuts. So we're going to take our bearing, we're going to make sure that our tang and our notch is to the outside as well. So it's to the outside here. And we're going to very gently just work that cap up on there. And once you get it up there, you go ahead and run the nuts up. Torque the connecting rod to specifications. Once you get the rod torqued to specs, we need to make sure that the engine rotates. So what I like to do is after I put each rod in, I haven't torqued that yet, but I'm going to, but after I put each rod in, I like to rotate the engine and make sure that there's no binding or anything of that nature. Go ahead and rotate it all the way around, make sure nothing's binding. Once you get that done, you can move on to the next connecting rod. And that's the way it should always be done on any engine. Stagger the rings, use a journal protector, use the correct kind of lube, and remember, you never force this thing together. If you have to force this to do something, you're probably doing it wrong. You have to treat it gently and firmly. So there you go. Thanks.